The following program is a production of Truth for the World. Sitting at the feet of Jesus, oh, what words I hear him say. How many times in our lives have we heard someone say, what should I do to go to heaven? I would guess if you asked 10 different people from all over the world, you would probably get 10, 10 different answers to that question. Some might say, well, just need to believe. Others might say, well, you don't do anything. Some might say, well, just pray and invite Jesus to come into your heart. There are so many answers that man can give to that one simple question. You know, we've been in a discussion on baptism for the past few shows, but today I want to stop and I want to take a step back and just ask the question, what does a person do to be saved? In answering that question, we'll properly answer the question, who may be baptized or who is eligible for salvation? If you have your Bibles, please open them to Acts chapter 2. Of course, you will remember the scene. The Jewish nation had gathered together to keep what it had been keeping for over a thousand years, that of Pentecost. Millions of people were in the city of Jerusalem. It was quite a time for a celebration. It is during these festivities that the question first comes up, what must we do? But before we get there, let's find out what led up to that question. As they were all gathered together, Look at what happened in Acts chapter 2 and verse 14. Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice, said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. Just a little while before this, Jesus had told his apostles to go and to teach. What was Peter doing right now? He lifted up his voice. He began to teach them. He told them that, this is the fulfillment of the prophecy found in Joel. It was Christ that they had put to death. He was responsible for the great event that was happening there that day. Look at what he says in Acts chapter 2 and verse 36. He says, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? So there's the question. Look at what we have done. We've killed the Holy One of Israel. We have killed the Messiah. And now they say, What shall we do? Well, what does verse 38 say? Does it say, Then Peter said unto them, Do... You don't have to do anything. Salvation is a free gift and you don't do anything to receive it. Is that what it says? No, it, look at it. Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now I have a question. Did he say, well, I tell you what, just pray and ask Jesus to come into your heart and you shall be saved. No, read it again. What shall we do? Peter said, repent and be baptized. Just repent? No. Just be baptized? No. Peter said, you want forgiveness, repent and be baptized. And then look at verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Well, I have another question. How many were added? 3,000 souls. Well, when were they added? Before baptism or after? Clearly it is after. Okay, so that is one case of conversion down. We have a few more to go. But let's look at our chart and let's fill in the appropriate blanks for how these people were to be saved. Now you will remember 
how that Peter and John had healed a man who was laid at the temple. And the people went to Solomon's porch, which was part of the temple, and they began to be amazed at what they had done in healing this lame man. Notice what happened in Acts chapter 3 and verse 12. When Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, You men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our power or our holiness we had made this man to walk? So he says, We didn't do this. Now look at what he says. He starts to preach or to teach them. He says in verse 13, The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified His Son Jesus, whom ye delivered up, and denied Him in the presence of Pilate when He was determined to let Him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised up from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. He says, you knew who He was, but you killed Him anyway. And then in verse 16, And his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I was that through ignorance you did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all the prophets, that Christ should suffer he has so fulfilled. And so Peter preaches to them. He talks about the resurrected Christ, the one that they had killed. This is the same sermon that he preached in Acts chapter 2. He says, you want to be saved? Look at what he says in verse 19 of Acts chapter 3. You want to be saved? Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. What was that, Peter? Repent and be converted. Well, I thought when you repented, you were converted. No, not according to what Peter has said. Look at Acts chapter 2, verse 38 again. Repent and be baptized. But what does he say here in Acts 3? Repent and be converted. Is there any difference in the action of baptism, the action of conversion? No, it's the exact same thing. And so in Acts 3 and 22, For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall you hear in all things, whatsoever he shall say to you. It shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. And so they had to hear. Well, they did hear. And what was the result? Verse 44. How many, uh, howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. And so we see that they believed. And so we'll mark those here on our chart. Uh, but let's look now to Acts chapter 5 and verse 14. Believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both men and women. Well, how were they added? The same way that those in Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 3 were added. They were added by being converted. We come over to Acts chapter 8, and you will remember how that Philip, later to be called Philip the Evangelist, he went down to a place called Samaria to preach to the Samaritans, those people who were half Jew and half Gentile. Let's see how that these people were converted. Acts chapter 8 and verse 5, Philip went down to the city of Samaria, and he preached Christ unto them. So we see that they did what Christ told them to do. They went and they preached. And then in verse 6, The people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Well, did they listen to what he said? Oh, yes, they did. Well, did they believe? Well, let's look down in verse 12. When they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Now, I have a question. They heard them preaching, and they wanted to know how to be saved. Did Philip say, 
Are you crazy? Asking a question like that? All you have to do is believe. <clears throat> is that what they did? It says they believed. And what else? They were baptized. Then you have another man here. He had been using magic to trick the people. When he saw the miracles and no doubt heard the message, look how he was saved. In Acts chapter 8 and verse 13, Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. And so we see that in order to be saved, one must first believe, and then he must be baptized. So on our chart, here's yet a, another example of what a person did in order to be saved. He believed and he was baptized. The Samaritans believed and they were baptized. Now, still here in Acts chapter 8, there was a man from Ethiopia who had gone up to keep the law. He was on his way back down to Ethiopia and God told a man named Philip, to go and preach to him, to convert him. And in Acts chapter 8, verse 35, we read, Philip opened his mouth, began at the same scripture, and preached unto him Jesus. So here he is again. He's preaching. Well, what did Christ command for them to do in the Great Commission? To go out and to preach and to baptize. Verse 36 says, And as they went on their way, they came into a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Now, he preached. He must have preached not only the man, but uh, there must have been a plan as well. And so he said, I want to be baptized. And Philip said, Why be baptized? If you believe, that's all you need. Is that what your Bible says? Oh, no. Look at verse 37. Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He says, in order for you to be baptized, you must first believe. He spoke and he confessed Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That was his confession. But was he saved? Oh, no. Anything else Philip wanted this man to do for salvation? Look at verse 38. He commanded the chariot to stand still. They went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Now, here's one reason why we immerse. You see, they both went down into the water. We don't sprinkle because baptism is a burial. A burial according to Romans chapter 6. And so we are buried at baptism. And then in Acts chapter 8, verse 39, when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord called away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But when did he begin to rejoice? Was it before his baptism or after his baptism? And my Bible says it was after that he went on his way rejoicing. And so on our chart, here is a man who heard, he believed, he confessed, and he was baptized. Well, that brings us then to Acts chapter 9. Now, we're going to flip back and forth some between Acts chapter 9 and Acts chapter 22. Acts chapter 9 is the actual event, and then Acts 22 is the inspired Paul's retelling of what happened to him that day. And so Saul had been killing Christians and putting Christians into prison. On the road to Damascus, a light shone around him, and he fell to the ground. Jesus appeared to him and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, well, who are you? He told him who he was. And Saul said, Lord, what must I do? You remember what happened, right? Jesus said, Stand up, Saul. Why are you asking me such a silly question like that? You don't have to do anything. Is that what happened? No. Well, did he say, Saul, if you'll just say this little prayer and invite me to come into your heart, is that what he said? No. Jesus said, If you want to be saved, 
Here is what you must do. Go into the city of Damascus and it will be told you what you must do. So even a vision from God didn't save Saul. So in Acts chapter 9 and verse 17, And Ananias went his way, entered into the house, putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, he hath sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 22, verse, beginning in verse 12, one Ananias, a devout man, according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me and stood and said to me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. In the same hour I looked up upon him. He said, The God of our fathers has chosen thee, that thou should know his will, see that, Je see that just one, and should hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. Did Ananias teach him? Yes, absolutely. And then he said, Now that you have heard, now that you believe, that you've been fasting for three days in prayer, certainly he must have had a, a penitent heart. But was he saved? Well, now if you say, yes, he was saved, then look at verse 16. And now why tarriest thou? Arise, and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. So, was he saved in his sins? Of course not. And so Acts chapter 9 and verse 18 says, He arose and was baptized. Immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received his sight. Forthwith he arose and was baptized. Well, we're about halfway through, so let's see what has happened. The Jews on Pentecost, they heard, they believed what was preached, they repented, and they were baptized. The same with the Jews on Solomon's porch. They believed, they were baptized. The same with the Samaritans, the same with Simon the sorcerer, the same with the Ethiopian eunuch, and the same with Saul of Tarsus. What did they do in order to find salvation? They heard, they believed the teaching, they repented, they confessed, and then they were baptized. Well, that brings us then to Acts chapter 10. Here we have a Gentile, the Gentile people who wanted to be saved. And so God tells Peter to go to a man named Cornelius. Cornelius was a man who already believed in God, but he was not saved. He already did a, a lot of good things. He prayed and he gave money to the poor. He was, a, I guess you would call, an all-around good person. But God said he still was not saved. Why? Because he had not done that which he was supposed to do in order to be saved. And so Acts chapter 10, God sends Peter to the Gentiles. And in verse 34, it says, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. So he again begins to preach, and he preaches the Christ. Verse 22 tells us they heard him. Verse 43, to him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Well, now someone says, well, look at that. If you believe, you receive remission of sins. Well, you know, if you have some disease and you go to your doctor and you believe that he can cure you of your disease, he tells you what you need to do in order to get better, so he prescribes a certain medicine. Friend, I don't care how much you believe in your doctor. If you don't do what he has prescribed, you will not be cured. So... Those who believe will do what God has said to do in order to be saved. Well, what is that? Well, look at what happened to them in verse 47 and 48. It says, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them 
to be baptized in the name of the Lord. And then they prayed, they him to tarry certain days. Friend, he didn't suggest that they be baptized, did he? He didn't say, well, now that you are saved, you may want to be baptized. So next month when everyone gets together, we will baptize you. Is that what he says? No. He commands them to be baptized. Friends, baptism is it's not an option. So they heard, they believed, and they were baptized. Now we come to Acts chapter 16 to the house of Lydia. Acts chapter 16, verse 13, And on the Sabbath we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made. We sat down and spake unto the women which resorted there. So they indeed were doing what the Great Commission told them. They were going and teaching. Verse 14 says, A certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. When she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. She constrained us. So she heard, and what happened? Well, she believed what they were teaching, and she was baptized. Are we beginning to see a pattern here? Belief followed by baptism of a penitent heart. We drop down just a few verses to verse 31. Paul and Silas had been thrown into prison for getting rid of a false prophet, a girl with an evil spirit, and some men had taken them and put them into prison. So what did they do in prison? Well, they prayed and they sang. An earthquake came and shook the bars open, and yet all the people stayed in their cells. The jailer came, was going to kill himself for letting the prisoners escape. But in Acts chapter 16, verse 28, we read, Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. And he called for a light and sprang in, and he came in trembling, and he fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord. So here they are preaching, and to all that were in the house. Verse 33, And he took them the same hour of the night, and he washed their stripes. Here they have a, he has a penitent heart. He has a repentant attitude. And then it says, And he was baptized, he and all his, straightway. So in verse 34, they continued to believe. Well, next we come to the Corinthians in Acts chapter 18. And what happened? Well, first we know that they preached Christ. Verse 4, He reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. When Silas and Timothy were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the Spirit, testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And then in verse 8, Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. Many people heard, verse 8 says, many people believed. Not only did they believe, what else did they do? They were baptized. Someone says, well, it doesn't say that Crispus was baptized. Well, if you turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 14, it says, I thank God, this is Paul speaking, I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius. And so we do see that he did indeed baptize Crispus. So here's another example of hearing, believing, and being baptized. Next we come to the Ephesians in Acts chapter 19. Verse 1, it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said to them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. He said unto them, Until what then were you baptized? They said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Jesus Christ. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So here were some who had been baptized before, 
But it wasn't with the right baptism. They had to be baptized correctly. That is in the name of Jesus. But clearly they had been preached to, they believed, and so they were baptized. Well, what is the point? The point is if you have not done these things, then that is what you must do to be saved. If we look at the sum total of all of these, of every one of these on this chart, if a person today wants to be saved, what did all of these people do? They heard, they believed, they repented of their sins, they confessed Jesus as the Son of God, and then they were baptized. What is the end result of all of this? It says, washing away of sins, salvation, times of refreshing and rejoicing. Friends, I want you to know that I love every soul that is watching this today. And it is my desire that you and I both go to heaven. But I know this, there is so much error taught today on what one must do to be saved. Many people will say, well, you just need to believe. Uh, many will say, well, you know, you can't really do anything to be saved. Others will say, well, you should hear and, and you should repent. And you should confess, but you don't really need to be immersed in water, not in order for salvation. Folks, I want you to know, I know what the religious world says. I know what man has to say about it. But today, friend, you have heard what God has to say about it. If you plan on going to heaven, there are five steps to salvation. Hear the word of God. Believe what the scriptures teach. Repent of your sins. Confess Jesus Christ as Lord and be baptized. Oh, but that's not the end of it. After you are baptized into Christ, you and I must live faithful to Him and to His Word. And so if you are not a child of God today, you can become one. Just do what we have seen on this chart and you can be saved. Sitting at the feet of Jesus Oh, what words I hear Him say Happy place so near, so precious May it find me there each day If you would like to learn more about God's Word with a free Bible correspondence course, then write us at Truth For The World, P.O. Box 5048, Duluth, Georgia, 30096, the United States of America, or visit us online at tftw.org. The preceding program was a production of Truth For The World, a work of the Duluth Church of Christ.